The oak tree is pretty synonymous with the British landscape. From the National Trust logo to the mighty major oak that allegedly sheltered Robin Hood, we've got a bit of a thing about them. Now these trees first appeared around 65 million years ago. To put that into perspective, the first Homo sapiens only appeared around 300,000 years ago, so we've got a bit of a way to go before we catch up with them. The oak tree appears in legends of famous trees, mythology and yes, even folklore. So let's go and have a look at some of these fascinating legends in this week's episode of Fabulous Folklore. Hello there and welcome to Fabulous Folklore, the podcast for all things folklore, occult and just a bit weird. I'm your host, Icy Sedgwick, blogger, fantasy author and your guide into these rather mysterious realms. I've got some rare things to show you, so come on in, take a look around, but be careful not to touch anything. These things sometimes bite. Well, hello there and welcome back to Fabulous Vogler with me, your host, Icy Sedgwick. I should also say welcome to September, which sounds a little bit like Guns N' Roses' Welcome to the Jungle, but a bit less fun. Anyway... We are going to have a look at the folklore of deciduous trees this month and partly that's just because I love doing tree folklore, not going to lie, but it's also because of the fact that like when I was walking home from work today, I actually walked through a pile of dried, crunchy, fallen leaves and I'm like, you know what, bit early for that, but it's clearly that time of year where we're starting to get more signs, shall we say, that autumn is on the way. So looking at deciduous trees seem to make sense. Obviously deciduous trees just simply being those that lose their leaves in the winter unlike evergreen trees which don't. So I thought we would start off with the oak tree because there's so many stories about them. The stories go back really quite a long way as well and they're just awesome. I love oak trees. They're really recognisable as well because I think there are certain trees where you look at the leaves and go I can't remember what you are but an oak tree you can always spot. So we're just going to dive right in and we're going to start off with oak trees and the weather and many European cultures include some kind of oak veneration, mostly because the gods associated with oak trees are also associated with storms, especially thunder and the height of the oak and its low resistance to electricity makes it prone to lightning strikes. And lightning was important because some believed that it was God striking the tree to leave mistletoe behind. Now, an Irish saying actually predicted the kind of weather you could expect depending on which tree's leaves appeared first, the oak or the ash. And the saying runs, if the oak before the ash, then we'll only have a splash. If the ash before the oak, then we'll surely have a soak. So obviously this is kind of more in the spring. Keep an eye out for which leaves appear first and it should apparently let you know what kind of weather we're going to be in for. Now, according to Margaret Baker, people saw oak trees as a protective tree against lightning or fire because of these links to lightning and storm deities. And lightning struck an oak in Needwood Forest and people actually travelled from miles around to harvest parts of the tree as lightning charms. Baker described staying in a cottage in Sussex as a child where a jar containing oak twigs, acorns and oak apples actually sat on the mantelpiece to guard against lightning strikes. Part of this is as a form of sympathetic magic which we've looked at slightly before the sense that if a tree can survive a lightning strike then it's therefore a good thing to have in your house to somehow deter said lightning strike as well. So that's kind of how that works. Now, I did actually have quite a fascinating conversation on Twitter some time ago regarding oaks after I referred to them as being sacred to Jupiter because they're also sacred to Perun, the Slavic thunder god. And the old European culture account on Twitter, which you can find at Serbia Island, actually tweeted a photo of an oak that was burning from the inside And it's a fascinating photo which you can find on the blog post that this episode is for. But the tweet actually read, An old oak struck by lightning burning from the inside. For Pomeranian South Baltic Slavs, trees struck by lightning have a special status, believed to guard off demonic forces and possess purifying power. This was probably because Perun the Thunder God now resided in them. And even better, the same account went on to add, And I quote, particularly prayers to God for protection against destructive weather conditions were always held under the village holy tree. Interestingly, most of these trees were large oaks, the holy trees of the Slavic thunder god Perun, end quote. And I just thought that was really interesting that you get these really similar ideas around trees across different types of belief system and mythology and indeed culture. 
So if we have a look at oak trees and religion, you have a look at this link with mythology. Now, the Irish word for oak is dare, so some people actually think that druid derives from oak because apparently druids worshipped in oak groves, although obviously without written records, it's hard to know that for sure. And like I think I've said before, a lot of what we know in inverted commas about the druids came from the Romans who were essentially on a mission to wipe the druids out. So it is possible that some of what they wrote was early propaganda. Now, according to druidry.org, the oak tree, and I quote, was regarded as the tree of life as its deep roots penetrate as deep into the underworld as its branches soar to the sky, end quote. Now, some people do believe that the ash tree was actually the tree of life, and other people have also suggested the yew tree is a prototype for Yggdrasil. So ultimately, who knows? But I do think it was quite interesting that the oak was mentioned there. Now, in ancient Greece, the Dodona oak became an oracle, and the Seloi priests would listen to the rustling leaves above to hear the judgments of Zeus pass through the trees. Now, one legend actually claimed a branch from the tree was also used to build the Argo, the ship used by Jason and the Argonauts, and the crew apparently got vital warnings from Zeus via this branch. Now, the Greeks also celebrated Daedala in an oak forest in Plataea, and what they did here was they attracted birds with cooked meat, and then they would let the birds essentially eat the meat and fly into the trees, and then whichever the first bird was that had eaten the meat, whichever tree they landed in first, they would cut that down, they would carve it into the form of a bride, and then they would carry it in a procession for Hera. So I thought it was quite interesting that they would also honour Hera using oak trees, because obviously that's the tree sacred to Zeus, who she's married to. And finally, according to Ernst and Johanna Lena, Abraham spoke to an angel under an oak tree, making the tree sacred. And it was also sacred to Dagda, an Irish god, where the acorn represented immortality and fecundity. And I do think acorns are fascinating when you look at the size of an acorn and then you look at the size of an oak tree. And it is, it's amazing just that, that whole phrase of, you know, from small acorns grow mighty oaks. You can sort of see why they're such fascinating trees. Now, obviously, the oak tree was also sacred to Jupiter, who was Zeus's Roman counterpart. And obviously, we do have the whole episode about Jupiter a, a couple of weeks ago. But because of this link with Jupiter, Roman commanders would actually wear crowns of oak leaves after success in battle, and oaths sworn on the oak tree were particularly binding. Obviously, bearing in mind that Jupiter was really in charge of oaths and treaties and things like that, so if you made a deal with someone and you did it you know, near an oak tree, then you're essentially saying to Jupiter, like, can you oversee this one, please, and make sure everything's above board. Now, according to Claude Lecoteur, the Romans put boundaries around oaks that had been struck by lightning because this made these particular oaks sacred places, ostensibly as a site where Jupiter had made contact with the world that we inhabit. An oak grove dedicated to Egeria stood near Rome's Capena Gate, and Egeria was apparently an oak nymph who inspired King Numa to develop wise laws for the Romans. And also pregnant women made sacrifices to Egeria in the grove to ensure a safe birth. While we're staying on the Roman theme, people actually fed the fire of Vesta, who's essentially considered to be the goddess of like hearth and home, with oak wood in Rome. And shipbuilders apparently use oak to protect ships from lightning strikes at sea. So these are all interesting ways that the oak essentially pops up in mythology and religion. But it's a it's a funny one because there are also famous oak trees that you can actually point to as well, which you don't necessarily get as often with other trees. I mean, I know there are famous yew trees that we did cover in the yew tree episode. But when you look at something like the hawthorn tree, it's a little bit more difficult to point to a whole host of them and speak to a specific tree, but you can with the oak. And one of these is the major oak that stands in Sherwood Forest, which I have actually seen. It is massive. And according to legend, Robin Hood and his men hid in the tree. Many people do think that the tree can't possibly be old enough, but it's become a tourist attraction nonetheless. We also have the Royal Oak, which is so named because it hid Charles II after the Battle of Worcester in 1651. And Charles basically avoided capture by the Roundheads by hiding in the tree at Boscobel. He then did return to the throne in 1660 and 29th of May became Royal Oak Day in recognition of its part in hiding him. And according to Margaret Baker, people would actually decorate their door knockers, shutters and even hats with oak. And those who didn't take part risked being stung with nettles, which seems a little bit excessive. Two oak trees stand guard at the foot of Glastonbury Tor, and they're named Gog and Magog after two ancient British giants. And scholars think that they may be the last oaks of a grove that originally led to the Tor. And finally, Hearn's Oak stood in Little Park, Windsor until 1796 when it was felled. 
and people claimed a link with Hearn the Hunter, an Elizabethan forest keeper. He was said to haunt the area, recognisable because he was wearing antlers, and Shakespeare actually mentions him in The Merry Wives of Windsor. Sightings of Hearn the Hunter were actually considered bad omens because they usually preceded national peril or dangers to the royal family. And people can actually find that there were sightings before the First World War, the Wall Street crash and the abdication of 1936. Should point out, however, that nobody saw him in 1939 and I can't find any sort of sense that he's been seen since. So I don't necessarily know how far we can really take that. But one of the oaks planted in 1906 has been named Hearn's Oak to continue the tradition. Lots of church parishes also had a priest read parts of the gospel at specific oak trees as part of the beating of the bounds ceremony. And these trees then went on to be known as the gospel oak. Oak trees also lend their name to Gallows Hill. And in Scotland, chieftains often planted oaks on high ground because by hanging deserters or enemies from it, their people could see the punishment for disobeying the rules. And then these high places became known as Gallows Hill. Now that's so much for famous oak trees, but how does it actually appear in folklore? Well, it's not all bad news for the oak really, because in some parts of the country, people believe that you could walk around an oak tree and wish your illness away. And the first bird to land in its branches would carry your pain away with it. And Christina Oakley Harrington actually notes that people in the West Country even used the oak tree for their yule log. A Welsh belief said that rubbing your left palm on oak bark on Midsummer's Day would keep illness away all year. And if you wanted to avoid premature ageing, wearing an acorn on a string around your neck would apparently do this particular thing. And it obviously is a lot cheaper than expensive skincare. Ruth Binney notes that one remedy involved making distilled spirit from acorns to control alcohol cravings. And again, according to Christina Oakley Harrington, you can also use oak in spells to protect your authority or to increase strength in leadership. And I think we can see this mostly from its associations with royalty and chief gods like Zeus and Jupiter. St Augustine preached under an oak on the Isle of Thanet, Kent, to protect himself against sorcery. So again, we can see this protective element of the tree coming through in its magical uses. Those suffering from toothache pushed nails into oak trees to transfer the pain to the tree, which seems a bit mean. And unfortunately, young women kept peeling bark from an oak tree in Surrey for use in love potions. But they did so on such a regular basis that it actually put the health of the tree at risk. So railings had to be put up around the tree to protect it. There is also a link between oak trees and fairies. And according to Harrington, there was a belief that fairies moved into oak trees when Christianity arrived. And if you find a hole in the trunk, this is a fairy door. Obviously, these are actually caused by fallen branches. If you want a call on a fairy, you can do so by rubbing your hand on the hole. And you can do this to either pay your respects or to ask for their help. It is sometimes considered advisable to offer a lock of hair or cream in return when you petition an oak for help, according to Harrington. I would obviously also say it might be a good idea to actually spend some time in the area and maybe pick up trash or something beforehand before you start just turning up being like, can I have a favour please? Fairies were actually believed to dance around Hearn's Oak that we were talking about earlier, but Harrington does also advise that if you want to meet the oak tree spirits or the fairies, then you can also dance around an old oak tree yourself. Now, I want to finish off with oak tree superstitions, and there's actually six that I found in volume two of the Encyclopedia of Superstitions, Folklore and Occult Sciences of the World. And the first one is peasant families would announce deaths to the nearest oak tree to bring luck to the surviving family. You could inherit or receive money by planting an acorn during the dark of the moon. Hanging an acorn around a child's neck helped to protect him from harm. Changes to the colour of oak leaves herald an impending disaster. If you need to cut down an oak, do it during the waning moon and only when the wind comes from the north, which seems very, very specific. And in Germany, holes in the trees were considered pathways for fairies, but in India, the holes are used as doors by the spirit of the tree. And you could therefore put your hands in the hole to be cured of various diseases. I'll obviously leave it up to you to decide which ones you believe. But I think we can tell from all of this that the oak tree really is an incredibly fascinating tree. I mean, they are beautiful as well when you come across them. And even when you see them in the winter and they're completely devoid of their leaves, they're still, they're very imposing. They have a very almost charismatic presence in a lot of ways. So you can see why they've captured the public attention. They are one of my favourite trees. And I hope that after this post, they're now one of your favourites as well. 
Next week we're going to go on to the willow tree and I always find willow trees really odd when I come across them and they're not leaning over water because I think I've become so used to seeing them with water it's really strange to see them elsewhere but there we go so we're going to do willow trees next week so I hope you're back for that one and also I would like to point out that so while September is the folklore of deciduous trees month we're going to be looking at lots of ghost stories and so on in October because let's be honest it's the best time of year to do that. So that is the end of this week's episode. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I will see you hopefully back here next week for the next episode on willow trees because that would be marvellous to have your company again. And in the meantime, I hope you have a marvellous week ahead and I will see you soon. Cheerio. Well, thank you for listening and thanks for visiting Fabulous Folklore. I hope you enjoyed your stay. If you did, why not consider subscribing in your podcast app of choice? If you enjoy the show, why not leave me a review and help other listeners to find it as well? And if you'd like bonus exclusive episodes of the podcast, then why not support me on Patreon? It does help me to keep the show going and it means that you get a little bit extra every month as well. And you can find all of the necessary links in the show notes below. So without any further ado, I will bid you adieu and I hope that you have a safe travels wherever you're going on to next.